Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. First Peter chapter four. What we study so far the sufferings of Christ for as much then as Jesus has suffered what we just talked about for us in the flesh. So he had a body, he had flesh. God. Arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. What's that? Get a gun? No. What's he talking about? You want to be a Christian? Oh yeah, I want to be a Christian. Prepare to suffer. Well, I don't want to do that. That's what that's what a Christian's called to do. We've already seen it by Peter. That's the will of God. That's all they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You don't want to suffer? You're not going to be a Christian. Plain and simple. Put that in your mind. Likewise, with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh, Jesus, has ceased from sin. So the message is prepare to die. Prepare to suffer. Get out of your sins. Do right. That he no longer should live the rest of his life time in the flesh to the lust of men but to the will of God what's the will of God you're not to live in your flesh you're not to live in the lust you're not to sin you are to suffer as a Christian oh everybody's against me well good the Bible says I don't get the promotion good that's what the Bible says people don't treat me right that's what the Bible says my family don't love me that's what the Bible says my church don't like me that's what the Bible says you're called to suffer. Jesus said, you know, you can't be his disciple if you hate not your mother, your father, and the family. Does that you mean you hate your family? No. If they don't love Jesus, you're not to go with them. You're not to power with them. And it's going to cause hatred. It's going to cause troubles and problems. And a lot of times, if you come from, if your family is a religious family, Catholic, uh, Hindu, uh, Islam, that's going to cause strife. That's going to cause problems, especially if you're Jewish. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. And you say, well, is Peter writing to Jews? The will of the Gentiles, which we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, reveling, banquetings, and abominable idolatry. That's what the Gentiles did. Look at those Gentiles. Look where they were. They were nobody important. That's my heritage. I'm a Gentile. That's my family. If I go after my family tree, what am I going to find? I'm going to find sins. I told I got a, I got a family member that came over on the Mayflower. I was like, oh, wow, cool. Separus. Came over to America in the Mayflower with the Geneva Bible. Wow, isn't that interesting? I looked further. The guy opened up a tavern, and he was arrested or charged or fined, whatever they did back then, several times for overselling beer. Selling beer and, and, and games on Sundays 
And look at that life. It's like, yeah, she have done that. She have done that. Dug into that. The Gentiles didn't have the law. The Gentiles did not have a relationship with God. That's why Jonah was against them. That's why Peter said, I ain't going to them. The one that we're reading. I ain't never ate that, Lord. To rise and eat. No, Lord, I never touch anything. Don't you call unclean. But God has cleaned. Those filthy people. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot. Now, I'm going to take verse 4. As Peter speaking to Gentiles because Jews had no nothing to do with Gentiles. And if that's the case, he is taking these Gentiles and saying, You are now above the Gentiles. And the Gentiles are looking at you like, You won't pal around with us anymore. Run, not you with us. Why don't you hang out with us? Aren't we your friends? And your family? La -di -da -da. And Peter's saying that relationship that you had with them is gone in Christ. That you run not with them to the same excess of riot, sins, and speaking evil of you. Now you may get along with those people that don't like you, and you think, "Oh, these are things that you no, no." They're speaking about you. They're making fun of you, and they're only playing and acting in front of your face. They're not being honest. And when you leave, does it? Hey, yeah, that's that's the weird part of our family. You know, they go to church, they do this, and they read their Bible. You know, we just allow them because they don't want to have anything to do with you. Satan. I mean, listen, Satan's trickery. Who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? <coughs> the quick, you know, those are going to be made alive. Now we're going to look at the judging. The quick and the dead, Paul said, are ready to rapture. Those that have died in Christ, they're going to be, they're going to be called up. Those that are alive and remain shall be caught up with them that are dead. For, for, this cause, or for this cause, was the gospel preached also to them that are dead. Now, is he going back to the previous chapter when they were in the flood? That they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit leave it alone but the end of all things is at hand here it comes but ye therefore in consequence therefore be ye therefore sober that yeah that can mean no alcohol also means be serious and watch unto prayer. Be serious. Keep your prayer life up. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. Save people. For charity shall cover the multitude of sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And this would be also sins that you've done against the brethren. If you really love them. Peter, Peter said, Jesus, if my brother offend me, how often should I forgive him? Seven times? <laughs> Jesus said, no, 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 no. Seventy times seven. So Peter saying, when we offend the brethren, our true love for the brethren, it's okay. It's okay. That forgiving spirit that we have as Christians that came from God. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Oh, I have to do it because he's part of the church. Jesus tells me I have to love you. That's not what it is. When you have to, 
You're forced to do it. That don't count. You realize when you take young children and you got to force them to go to church. Oh, but you're doing great. Yeah, but God don't count that. God don't count force. God don't count you're in that church if it's a Bible-believing, God-honoring church and you're this dear because of the girl that you want to marry or there for the guy that you have the hot eyes for. You're not there for God. You're there for another excuse. And if you put money, whatever how your church puts money into, and you're doing it because people are watching you. You are doing it because it's being expected from you. If you're doing it because the message says, you ought to go, that's grudgingly. That don't count. Thermometers in church, God don't count that. Keep saying it. Keep saying, oh, we need the money. We need the money. We need the money. We need the money. Oh, help us, help us, help us, help us. And when the people do good, yeah, that's not. They're being forced. God wants, we're told, cheerful givers. As every man has received the gift. Hospitality, charity, soberness. Even so, minister, that means helping others, the same one to another. What God has given you that you can help. You say, well, you know, I don't know how to cook. And these people over here, they're, they're sick and they need food. And I don't know. I don't know what can do. Hand somebody in the church, hand them some money. Say, here, buy something and, and, and give it to them. Or say, Lord God, there's nothing but I can give but prayer. Oh, Lord, you know. We'll take your children this weekend. You know, we'll watch your children. Whatever you can, whatever God's ability is giving you to help others, do it. And do it not because you have to. Do it because you want to do it. Do it because loving others, because of hospitality, and you'll be rewarded. <coughs> <coughs> minister, as good stewards. That's a minister. You know, you got people out there who use that name or title minister in their title of name. And I wonder if they help people. Or is it just a title? Minister is not a noun. It's not a person, place, or thing. A steward is not really a person, place, or thing. It's a verb. It's an action. A steward is somebody who is put in charge of valuable things on a ship. You would not give the most expensive diamond ring to the captain of a ship. I don't care what that, whatever ship it is. It is not the captain's responsibility for that diamond ring. Though he may have that big entire liner or a little schooner. The person that's in charge of that diamond ring would be a steward. The person that is in charge of the people on that ship, their welfare, their care, there is the steward. The steward would report to the captain. We all report to God. But what about the lives of the precious stones, better than a diamond, that God has entrusted us, that are under us. Are their needs being being taken care of? Are they being met? Or does that st that that steward, you know, he's got that ring and he's just flipping it up in the air and the on the deck, and then boom, a big wave comes along and just flops over in the middle of the ocean. He's gonna have to give an account of where that ring is and what happened to that ring. Honestly, no lies. It's helping others. Jesus told Peter, Do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Feed my lambs. Peter, do you know do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you know I love you? Oh Lord, come on, why do you keep asking? Feed my sheep. Minister to the sheep, Peter. Minister to them. Help them. Guide them. Whatever there is. 
minister, steward. If any man speak, you going to say anything? Let him speak as the oracles of God. We had a guy speak to us today. It wasn't of God in the Bible. Telling us we ought not be with doing what we're doing. And, uh, and I just said, listen, what the Bible say? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's exactly what we're doing. So shut up. Scripture shut him up. We are to speak our mouths to what the Bible says. Proverbs speaks of a man who will hold his tongue, hold his mouth, and check what God has to say. And if he doesn't, he's a fool. Say, Lord God, you know, that, that family over there, Dave, right, here we go. This is, this is ministry. This is, that family over there, they're, they're wrong. They're, they're totally doing wrong. Lord, I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to say, Lord, you're going to have to spell it out. If you really want me to say something, I'm going to pray it out. And Lord, before I go over there, before I say anything, even as I'm praying, you better remove the moat out of my eye, Lord. I'm not going to say anything, Lord, until you certify my mouth to say something. We all ought to be like that. If any man speaks, that's why, because that can go to save the lost. Any man. But for Christians, let him speak as the oracles, what God has, has ordained of God. If any man minister, there's that minister again, and it's not the title, it's the verb. Let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. So how can you put that self as a title of yourself? What is God going to give that's going to be great among people if it's just a title? Are you a rich Christian in, in, in the congregation? I think God's giving you money to help. Are you a Christian and it's, it's with a vehicle? Then you can use that for help. You got time to pray? You can use that for whatever it is. Sewing machine, uh, whatever. The ability to take care of children. The ability to do nursery. The ability to... Whatever God has gifted you. Use it to minister to others. That God in all things may be glorified. Now... When you minister, when you do something, don't you do it in your own spirit. Don't go bragging about it. It says, Lord, that God in all things, everything you do, anything you can do, the minister, may be glorified through Jesus Christ. So we've got to do it in Christ. And when we do what God's given us, God gets the credit. And I, I don't want to mention anything because I don't want to limit anything. A person who is in a nursing home may think, there's nothing I can do. I can't leave here. The, the door alarms will go along. I've got to stay in this room. Or, I, or I'm limited, very limited. And I've had people in a nursing home that we were in, they couldn't do nothing. I said, can you pray? Well, yeah, we can pray. That's the greatest gift you got. And some people say, oh, I never thought that. There you go. Here's a list. There are people who go out Saturday. There are people who go out Friday. There are people that, you know, church service Thursday. This person's in the hospital. This person, you know, they're praying. Whatever it is. Here's a list. Here's a prayer list. To pray for. All right. Are you able to get around? Wheelchairs? Are you? Yeah, we, I can get around. Then do something we we can't do. And this is something I would tell the men at prison when I was in the prison ministry. You've got the greatest prison ministry that I can't get. They'll look at you, well, what are you talking about? When I'm gone, when I leave, you got seven more days. 
Go to the people that won't come here. Go to the people I can't speak to and witness and help them and read to the Bible to them. Do something there where I can't get into. There's always a ministry where you are at that someone else can't get into. You got a gated community you can't get into? Well, if you're in that gated community, you go to where we can't go. You got this great job that, that no one getting, I mean, security and stuff like that. No one can get in there. You're in there. Do it. You'll be surprised with a little prayer when you find it. Wow, I didn't know God opened that door. Even a person who's, who's, who's bedridden and can't get up in a hospital, nursing home, at home, I mean, they can't do nothing. They got other people take care of them. You can pray. If that's all you can do, that's a gift that God's giving to you. Do it willingly. Do it for the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you will be accounted to what your prayers and what happens to other people. So, in whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Prayer is the simplest thing we can do. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial. Now, we're under Nero. Wicked man in the government. He is burning Christians. So, fiery trial. Ooh, yeah. Which is to try you. Are you going to give up your faith? So the Roman Catholic Church did. Hey, listen, we'll leave you alone if you will take this Mass, if you will proclaim that Jesus is the Mass. I ain't doing it. Then we're going to put you on the faggot. We're going we're gonna to kill you. We're going to put you in the Inquisition. What you're going to do is just denounce Christ. That's a trying. As though some strange thing happened unto you. Which is to try you as though some strange thing is it. Peter's, you know, if the, if the government, if the religion, if the people are going to try you with a fiery trial, with, with torture, whatever it is, that's not so strange. You say, well, come on, what are you talking about, Peter? What happened to Jesus? The author and finisher of our faith. What happened to him? It's not so not so weird. It's not so it's not so bad because he's the one that suffered and died for us. And if he did it, you see what Peter's doing now again? He's closing this chapter off with the sufferings of Christ. If he can do it, so can we, and we all not to bellyache about it. He didn't bellyache. <laughs> But rejoice. That's contrary. Who rejoices at pain and suffering? Inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Oh, okay. So, as Christ, so for me, it's not woe is me. It's for the Savior's love. That when his glory shall be revealed, rapture, second advent, for us would be the rapture, speaking to the same people. When will that glory be? When we are gathered together with, with the dead in Christ, and then we meet Jesus in the air. There he is. That's the glory. Shall be revealed. That's, they will see Jesus. Ye may be glad also with exceedingly joy. Now these people are going to die. They're dead. Some of them died by the punishments. What's Peter saying? In your trials and tribulations and maybe even a martyr's death. Wait till you see Jesus. It'll be worth it all. You won't be happy if you if you're saved and you see Jesus and say, "All right, I'll take that wafer. I don't want to die." You're not gonna be happy. You deny Jesus, 
And Jesus said, if you deny me, I'll deny you an inheritance. You won't get a reward. You won't get a crown. Somebody's picking on like, like it happened to us tonight. And wouldn't it be the greatest thing you, you think someone just yelling at us? Right? That, that's the harsh thing. The harshest thing right now in America is that someone yelled at us. But what if we were raptured at that moment? And realize it all happened to Jesus too. You guys, the very, I'm going to say organization. I think this is the right word. You realize the very organization, those priests that God set up in the book of Moses, those priests, those Levites that God said this, proper clothes, proper ways, proper what, I mean, everything, those are the ones that gave Jesus the hard time. So Christ suffered, so should we. If ye be reproached, that's what we were tonight, for the name of Christ. Well, I don't know for the name of Christ, but that guy's really whacked out in the Bible. Happy are ye. I'm happy. That guy's not happy. I am. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. I know what I did. I know what I do in Christ. I know it's, it's Christ and Bible honoring. I know God approves what the ministry I do. Now, sometimes I fail. Sometimes I get in the flesh. All right. That's a sin. But when somebody comes up to me and harasses me, and tells me that's not how you're supposed to do it. You're wrong or whatever. However they do it. That guy told us in the simple words. His other words that I've never heard before. You're doing it wrong. And my light. My way of life is right. And as I picked up the Bible. And quoted the verse to him. God is right and he was wrong. And I can rest assured that, Lord willing, if I have tomorrow, I'm going to pick up the Bible and I'm going to do the same thing to the farmer's market. I'm going to preach the gospel. We're going to hand out gospel tracts. And we know we're right. Find me a place in the Bible about gospel tracts. It's wrong. The Ethiopian eunuch was traveling in his chariot and he was reading Isaiah 53. I don't think he had the whole scroll. How's that? Well, about preaching to the people, screaming at them. Mar, I mean, Paul was on Mars Hill. He knows all the idolatry. He stood up and preached to them. Jesus got in a boat while the people were on the seashore, and he preached to them from a boat. I'm doing what the Bible says correct, and I'm happy. I'm joyful. I am extremely glad my family is part of me in, this, in the ministries we have. I am extremely glad that my wife and Walmart can't leave the place without offering gospel tracts. Because maybe one of those people will be sitting on the bus, like that guy in his chariot, reading something, and maybe will come to know Christ. Why are you yelling at me? Oh, because you're a fool, and we're doing right. And if somebody got saved, we will be rewarded. And if no one got saved, we will still be rewarded because we did what the Bible says. And God is not unmerciful and unkind that he's not going to reward us through our doing. So we're right. Happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God. You know, the, the grace, I got to turn this light on. Okay. Get it. Get Bert. Yeah. You know, there's two things that we get in the car when we pack up of our street ministries. We are always happy to talk about somebody who loved the Lord and wanted to do right. Hey, you know, I got this person. They're just really happy to do what you're doing. And they come from the... And then another thing is, you know, we talk about that idiot that, that yells at his fathers and stuff like that. It's a blessing. Of God... Uh, Let's see. Happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. 
On their part, he is evil spoken of. Those are the people who are against what you're doing that God's told you to do. They're against you. But on your part, he, God, Jesus, is glorified. Like I said, I'm only going to preach about what we do. When we preach at the farmer's market, we know people hate it. Right there. And they speak evil of us. Right there. God's looking down from heaven and saying, I like that. God says in Romans chapter 10, I love them feet. While people say, I wouldn't do that. And God and Jesus look at each other, yeah, I would do that. Son, remember you did that? Imagine somebody come up, Jesus wouldn't do that, and then God and the Son have a little conversation. Father, I did that. I know, they just don't read my word. Did you hear that? What? He said, go, you know, all the world and preach the gospel. He just quoted scripture back at him. He just mentioned you, son, being on that boat, preaching to all the people. He just said Moses speaking to all the people. Moses had to be a loud preacher for all Israel to hear him. And they would have to say, oh, there's no one in the Bible. Then you don't know. You don't know. Stephen got so people so riled up at the invitation, they chewed on him. Read it. They chewed out the preacher. Literally. So, God is glorified when we do right. God is glorified when, when we suffer. You read Fox's Book of Martyrs. You read the Book of Acts. You know what, you know what the suffering of the Christians happened? More people came to Christ. We want a revival in America. is not going to happen because the church is not suffering. Why is the gospel being preached and people getting saved in other countries? Because they are suffering. They are dying. They are losing. And yet they're winning. As long as we have that constitution of freedom of religion. Check out the, check out the proper revivals of America. Not the foolish ones. Not, you know, you got candy and, and dollar bills underneath the sea. And we're just all great fine people. <coughs> check out the hell fire preaching camp meetings. And there wasn't one president yet that sat in the White House. George Washington came after the great revivals of America. Check it out. So happy are we, are ye. 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. Uh-oh. Well, oh, I got, I got, I could do anything I want because I got freedom. Well, Peter says don't kill anybody. Jesus said, if a man looks upon a woman that lusts after his heart has already committed adultery, so if you think about killing your boss, you're charged with murder. I'm going to kill that neighbor for his dog barking on, and you're murdering. See, it don't have to be physical. Or as a thief. Oh, they don't need this paper clip. Or as an evildoer. Yeah, Peter said, murder or thief, I'm just going to put down, what, 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 what word can I think of any sin in the book? Evil doer. How's that? Go back and look up evil all through the, the book of the Bible, and it does reference to sin. Evil is the consequence of sinning. I like that, Peter. Or a busybody in other men's matters. These television talk shows are a sin. When you want to find out what's going on to my favorite actress, what's my music, favorite museum's doing, what's my favorite ball player doing, you are a busybody in other men's matter. And Peter says, don't do it. It's wrong. Did you hear about that family? It's none of your business. I want you to know it's none of your business. God knows. They know. And Peter says, don't do it. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, oh, 
I'm a Christian. Let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God on this behalf. So Peter's going to say, Paul, Peter said, listen, you're suffering because you are a Christian. Get off your poopy, scoopy attitude and say, hey, glory to God. I'm guilty of that one. I'm guilty of that one. One of my jobs I lost, and I don't know. I'm guilty of that one. I need to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Check out Daniel chapter 3. Check out Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. They suffer for God and they're in there with, with the Lord. You know, come on out, Shadrach, Meshach. No, no, no. We're fine in here. We don't want to come back out there in the world. Get out here. No, we're having a good time. Right? For the time is come. I wish she was now. That judgment must begin in the house of God. Judge not least you be judged. Peter is speaking about the judgment seat of Christ here. Just because you're a Christian does not mean you're not going to be judged. All my sins are under the blood. Really? <laughs> Wait, you just got saved? Oh no, I was saved five years ago. Okay. All your sins are under the blood? Listen, I've been saved since 1987. There's some things I'm learning in the Bible right now. Like, oh, oh, very confess that. Didn't know that was a sin. Listen, God is going to judge my thought life. I, I have not been perfect on my thoughts. Guarantee. Guarantee. I will be judged. I will have ashes. Sorry to say. But I'm a sinner saved by grace. And if it first begin at us. All right, so what did Peter just tell us? Let's take Peter and Paul. Well, Mary got in there. Oh, sorry. All right, according to Paul, we get saved. We're newborn babes in Christ. We just said, grow it thereby. And then we get to the point in our Christian life that our departure, we die. The rapture is going to come. All those that died in Christ are going to go up in the clouds. Those that are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds and will be caught up to see Jesus. Right? Peter now tells us that at that point we're going to be judged. So the judgment happens after the rapture of the church. Then we get the seven years of tribulation period. And then we get the, the Christ we come in, and he'll be judging the nations, goat nations, sheep nations. Then we get the millennial reign. Then the heaven and earth, mother earth, and all that disappears. Goodbye. See you there. And then comes the great white throne judgment. So, the house of God. All right, let's have fun with this one now. We got time. Church is raptured up. We're at the judgment seat of Christ. We know that by Paul. Will the bricks of the Baptist church come forward? Where's the doors? Oh, come on, doors. Get up here. Come on, bring the windows. Let's judge the windows. They, they were always clean. No, no! Are the woods, plank, bricks, and stones that are going to be... No, it's not. The house of God is the people. It is not the building. So you can meet in a building and be called a church. You can meet in your living room and be a church. You can go out in the field. As many have done in the church history and be a church. I'm trying to think. Whitfield met in, in wildernesses and met in woods and sat on and stood on tree stumps. I guess that wasn't a church because he wasn't in a building. Great people who were called in the ministry during the Great Revivals were called out of tent meetings. Uh, it's not a building, so I guess they didn't get saved. Where two or three are gathered together. That's what my wife said today with that, with that guy. She come out, you know, he, you guys don't belong to no part of the church. We are the church. 
And we're here for Christ. God is not going to judge windows and doors. He's going to judge the people. The people are the church. Some people think their, their building is going to go up in a rapture too. No, Satan is going to love your building. He will take your church building, your multi-million dollar Colosseum church building, and he will use it for his honor and glory. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. Don't spend so much money for Satan. Ooh, where did that come from? <laughs> and if it first began at us, the Christians, so we're going to be judged. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So there, the Christians are judged before the final judgment, the great white throne judgment. And those that do not obey the God, okay, those that do not obey the gospel. Well, who were they listening to? Wasn't the Christians preaching? Weren't they the ones that they were speaking evil of us? So those that against those that do preach the gospel, we will be judged first. I'm going to I'm going to take the farmers market. That's what we do. All those people who have listened to us, and whatever they said, whatever they do about the throne radishes and all that, I will be judged before they will be. And then when time is done and the, and the, and the tribulation and the, and the millennium and all that, when that great white throne judgment is, they will be called up. And they'll be judged for their actions. And they will give an account of what they did to God and Jesus by what they've done to my family. You say you're crazy. Paul, why persecutest thou me? Paul never persecuted Jesus. Never. He persecuted Christians. And Jesus Christ takes that literally. So when we see on their part, he is evil spoken of. Those people, if they don't get right, they'll end up at their judgment. And you've done what God's told you to do, so you don't need to be, you're happy. You know why I'm happy? I'm not going to be at that great white throne judgment. In front of God, at least. And if the righteous, by Jesus Christ and my righteous, scarcely be saved, now there's going to be a small, marginal group of people, not the church age, that are going to be saved at that great white throne judgment. The names, the books were open. If their name was in that book, they're saved. But if their name was not in that book, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Noah preached. All those people that did not get in that ark are going to show up here. What about Ham, Japheth, and Shem? They're not in the church age. They're not under the law. If their names are in the last book of life, they go with their father into eternity. Now let's say, because we don't know that. Let's say, I don't know, I don't want to be offensive, but let's say Ham's wife was not saved. All right, I don't know. I don't even know what her name was. She heard the preaching of her father-in-law all those years. She watched her mother-in-law help and aid her husband. Don't tell me don't tell me she didn't she didn't do nothing when, when that arc was going on. She watched her brothers in laws do the work. She watched her scissor sisters in laws do the work. Maybe she made fun of them. I'm, I'm just picking on one woman. I'm picking on one of the eight. Yeah, she may be saved, I don't know. She got in the ark. But if she did harass them, She's going to stand at the judgment, and you know what? Everybody else is going to get in. She won't. Now, I don't know. I have no idea. I just try to. That, maybe that's a bad example, illustration. If it is. Yeah, eight will say so. I just, but the whole world will stand condemned at Noah because they didn't get in. And they, re, they reviled him. They made fun. I know they did. 
and they will stand judgment of God. Wherefore, wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God, there's that will again. It is the will of God that Christians suffer. Commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Don't give up. I'm tied to the stick and there's light in it. Don't give up. They just said they're going to rape my daughter and they're going to pull her fingernails out and put her hands in the flame. Don't give up that's kind of harsh um you want to check on how peter died peter is not just blowing air here he is one to suffer he was crucified and whatever the story i don't know but we do know jesus told us that Peter would be crucified. So Peter knows exactly what he's talking about. Peter's one of those men that God said, Peter, yes, Lord, you're going to die by this death. Okay. And he writes to us, Peter suffered. Peter suffered by his own men, too. He went to Cornelius. Wow, this whole family got... you. They're speaking the tongues to us. You see this? Wow, God has come to these miserable... I mean, these Gentiles. God's come to us so great. He goes back to Jerusalem. Hey, guys. I... What'd you do go to those Gentiles? Well, you, you, Peter, you're off your rock. He fought with them about that. Peter had his own hard times. Yet he still served the Lord. He served the Lord under death. Just like Paul was stoned. He was killed by rocks. And yet... He is faithful unto death. And that's what we're to be. We're to be faithful to the sufferings, to death. May the rapture will come. That's what they were looking for. If not, we die and we wait for the rapture still. Glory to God. Rapture's coming.